Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa visited today the general headquarters of the Bahrain Defence Force, the BDF. Upon arrival, His Majesty the King was received by the Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defence Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Defence Affairs, Abdullah bin Hassan Al Nuaimi, Chief of Staff of General Thayer bin Saga Al Nuaimi. His Majesty was accompanied by the Royal Guard Commander, Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and Royal Court Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. During His Majesty's meeting with a number of senior officials, he congratulated them on the new Hijri year and hailed the efforts of the BDF members in protecting the country, its civilization march, its unity and its comprehensive national gains. His Majesty expressed thanks to Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa for his efforts to develop the BDF. His Majesty the King commended the hard work, joint cooperation and coordination between the BDF, the Ministry of Interior and the National Guard for the benefit of the country and its people. He also expressed pride in the BDF members who participated along with the Saudi Armed Forces and UAE Armed Forces within the Arab Coalition to defend the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and supporting the people in Yemen. His Majesty praised the fruitful results of the Arab Ministerial Quartet Committee on the follow-up to the crisis with Iran which was held in Cairo yesterday affirming Bahrain's aspirations for peace and security in the region and the world. His Majesty the King wished all the officers, non-commissioned officers and members of the BDF further success. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa attended the Thai Expo organised by the Office of the Small and Medium Enterprises Promotion in cooperation with the Thai Embassy and the Thai Club in Bahrain. Upon arrival, His Royal Highness was received by the Thai Ambassador to Bahrain, Thanis Nasongla. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed that the economic field constitutes one of the distinctive aspects of cooperation between Bahrain and Thailand, affirming the two countries' keenness and bolstering this cooperation to serve joint interests. 
His Royal Highness stressed the importance of the role of small and medium enterprises in supporting governmental efforts in various countries in the fields of sustainable development through its ability to provide further job opportunities that represent an addition to national economies. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister listened to a briefing by the Thai Ambassador to Bahrain on the exhibits and His Royal Highness watched a musical show that reflects Thai folklore. Then His Royal Highness toured the exhibition where he viewed Thai products. On the occasion he expressed admiration for the Thai products quality and workmanship, wishing the organisers and participants success in achieving their business aspirations. His Royal Highness asserted that Bahraini Thai relations witness a continuous growth in various sectors, which stems from the solid historical ties between the two countries, which are based on the joint belief that cooperation is the optimal means of achieving rapprochement. He urged business people to benefit from the two countries' promising opportunities in building further economic partnerships. His Royal Highness here at the organisation of the Thai Expo's events, stressing the importance of increasing the number of such exhibitions for their marketing role in developing commercial exchange. For his part, the Thai Ambassador expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for attending the exhibition, which reflects His Royal Highness's keenness on bolstering bilateral relations. He asserted that His Royal Highness's attendance of the exhibition contributes to achieving its goals aimed at increasing commercial relations between Bahrain and Thailand. The Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs held its periodical meeting chaired by the Deputy Premier Jawad bin Salam al Rayyad. The Ministerial Committee reviewed the topics and memoranda listed on the meeting's agenda including proposed laws and resolutions which the Committee thoroughly studied at the Government's request and took its recommendations to refer them to the Cabinet for consideration and taking appropriate action. It considered several bills of law submitted by the Legislative Branch after legal drafts had been prepared by the Legislation and Legal Opinion Commission. The committee also considered proposals referred by the government to the Council of Representatives and prepared the government's reply in the light of responses received from the concerned governmental entities. 
the committee decided to submit a memoranda to the Cabinet to take the necessary action in this regard. The committee expressed opinions on some of the matters referred to it from various ministries and governmental entities. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in the 152nd Ordinary Session of the Council of the League of Arab States at the ministerial level. The Council discussed the draft submitted by Bahrain regarding the violations of Al Jazeera Channel against Arab states. The draft affirmed that Al Jazeera Channel, representing a media outlet of Qatar, continues to attack Arabs through its programmes, documentaries and fabricated news reports. It added that the channel works in promoting hatred and discord in the Arab community and inciting people against national systems and symbols in full disregard of the principles of the Arab Media Honour Code and the relevant international charters. The items submitted by the Kingdom noted that for two decades Al Jazeera has hosted various terrorist, rogue and outlaw groups that are wanted in Arab countries. It added that the channel is considered the main source that promotes the ideologies of terrorist and extremist groups such as Al-Qaeda, Daesh, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab in Somalia and Sa'ala in Yemen and many other terrorist organisations who broadcast exclusively from this channel. It also added that Qatar has used this channel to circulate fabricated news and broadcast offensive news reports and documentaries that harm the interests of the kingdom. It also stressed that the channel has waged systematic media wars against Bahrain in order to distort the human rights situation and hinder the process of reform, democracy and development. The item affirmed the involvement of Al Jazeera in cases of intelligence and harming the national security of the kingdom, stressing that such crimes are documented with their evidence and are pending before the judiciary. It also stressed the importance of taking strict legal measures to curb the practices of this channel and observe its hostile acts against Arab countries and people. The Council decided to refer this item to the Council of Arab Information Ministers for consideration. The Council also issued a resolution on the Iranian interference in the internal affairs of Arab countries, condemning the Iranian interventions in the internal affairs of the Kingdom, its support to terrorism, training terrorists, smuggling weapons and explosives, provoking sectarian strife and issuing statements at various levels to destabilise security, order and stability in the Kingdom. It also highlighted the role of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and its arms, the Asaib al aqqa terrorist brigades and the terrorist Hezbollah in establishing and training terrorist groups in the kingdom. The Council also emphasised its support to Bahrain to combat terrorism and terrorist groups to maintain security and stability. The resolution praised the efforts of security bodies in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia who managed to thwart many terrorist plans and arrest the members involved. The resolution also held the Lebanese Hezbollah with weapons and ballistic missiles. It also condemned the hostile speech of Hezbollah's Secretary General, where he issued and rejected statements against Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Yemen in a blatant interference in the internal affairs of these countries with the aim of spreading sedition and hatred. It emphasised the need to stop Hezbollah from spreading extremism and sectarianism and interfering in the internal affairs of states. Concerning the item of safeguarding Arab national security and combating terrorism, the Council issued a resolution welcoming the designation of some persons belonging to the al ashda brigades of Bahrain on the list of terrorists, considering that this position reflects the determination of the world countries to address all forms of terrorism. The designation also supports the efforts and steps taken by the Kingdom to promote security and stability and peace. The Council also discussed several issues including the Arab League reform, the Palestinian cause and the situation in Libya, Syria and Yemen. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in the 12th meeting of the Arab Ministerial Quartet Committee on the follow-up of the crisis with Iran, comprising of Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Egypt and the Secretary General of the League of Arab States. The meeting was held yesterday at the General Secretariat of the League of Arab States headquarters on the sidelines of the 152nd regular session of the Arab League Council at the ministerial level in Egypt. The Ministerial Committee discussed the latest developments concerning the crisis with Iran and its existing Arab relations, as well as to address the Iranian interference in the internal affairs of Arab countries. It issued a statement condemning the hostile and inciting speech of the Secretary General of the terrorist Hezbollah on September the 10th and the reprehensible abuses he had said against Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, the UAE and Yemen and its exploitation of religious occasion that must be respected. 
The committee also noted that this constitutes a blatant interference in internal affairs, which further adds up to the dangerous role played by this party, which helps in facilitating Iran's role in destabilising security and stability in the region. The committee stressed that this party creates a major source of tension, which necessitates deterring and confronting it, those supporting it, and obliging them to immediately stop these statements and all practices that impede efforts to bring peace to the region. It also calls on the Lebanese government to condemn these blatant statements and interventions coming from one of its main components within the framework of commitment to fraternal relations between Arab countries and the Lebanese Republic. The committee also denounced and condemned the continued Iranian interference in the internal affairs of Bahrain and its malign role in supporting terrorism, training and harbouring terrorists, stirring up sectarian strife and its ongoing hostile statements in order to destabilise security and stability, as well as the establishment of terrorist groups in Bahrain funded and trained by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and its arms being Aslasib al ahaq terrorist brigades and the terrorist Hezbollah. The committee welcomed the designations made by a number of countries on the so-called al the Brigades in Bahrain, which is based in Iran as a terrorist organisation and a number of members of the list of terrorism, noting that this position reflects the country's keenness to combat terrorism at the regional and international levels and to confront all those supporting, inciting and sympathising with it, affirming that the country's support reflects the efforts and actions of the kingdom in promoting security, stability and peace in Bahrain. The committee stressed the importance of the report submitted by Bahrain to the 152nd session of the Council of the League of Arab States on the Iranian interference in its internal affairs from January to August 2019, which affirms Iran's constant support for terrorism and to stir up strife to destabilise security and stability in the kingdom, which is in violation of the principle of good neighbourliness and respect for the sovereignty and stability of state and non-interference in the internal affairs in accordance with the principles of the Charter of the United Nations and international law. Thus, the committee affirmed its support of Bahrain in all measures taken to maintain its security and stability. The committee also addressed Bahrain hosting the international military meeting held on the 31st of July 2019 to discuss the current situation in the region as a result of threats to the security and safety of international navigation in the Arabian Gulf which is an affirmation of Bahrain's relentless endeavours and its constant and participatory policy to provide all means of security, peace and stability in the region and the world through collective action and joint cooperation with brothers, allies and international partners. The committee denounced the statement of the Iranian Foreign Ministry spokesperson on hosting the meeting by Bahrain and stressed that this statement reflects Iran's approach which is completely contradictory to what would benefit the countries and peoples of the region and reflects its clear keenness to obstruct all efforts and initiatives aimed at enhancing security, stability and freedom of navigation in the Arabian Gulf and the entire region. The committee also condemned the continued Iranian interference in the internal affairs of Arab countries and condemned the constant provocative statements made by Iranian officials against Arab countries. With the start of the new academic year 2019 to 2020, students from Bahrain are now back at school after the Ministry of Education provided the necessary means to ensure a successful return to school. On the occasion, the Minister of Education, Dr Majid bin Ali al Nuimi, visited a number of schools where he inspected their progress and congratulated the administrative and educational bodies and students on the start of the new school year. The Minister pointed out that the Ministry has recruited 900 Bahraini teachers and added that it has succeeded in dealing with the exceptional situation of this year, namely the partial or total evacuation of a number of schools, whose construction situation is not commensurate with the services and facilities that support the educational process provided by the government. He affirmed that the Higher Education Council is continuing its efforts to develop this vital sector through developing the level of academic programmes, encouraging investments and attracting international universities to the Kingdom, pointing out that this year will witness the opening of the Abdullah bin Khalid College for Islamic Studies, which aims to prepare qualified graduates in Sharia law as well as Sharia sciences and Islamic banking. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia today condemned and rejected Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's pledge to annex West Bank's Jordan Valley if re-elected on September the 17th. The Saudi Royal Court said this declaration is a very dangerous escalation against the Palestinian people and represents a flagrant violation of the UN Charter and the principles of international law. 
In light of this, Saudi Arabia called an emergency meeting of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, the OIC, at the level of foreign ministers to discuss this issue to develop an urgent plan of action in order to confront Netanyahu's pledge. The Arab Ministerial Committee has condemned Iran's support for the Houthi targeting Saudi Arabia with ballistic missiles. The committee, made up of ministers from Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, the UAE and Egypt, condemned Iran's ongoing support for terrorist acts in the Arab region and its violation of the Security Council's Resolution 2216, which requires militia to be disarmed. The committee also reiterated the importance of opposing Iranian attempts to threaten security of the region's energy supplies, as well as maritime installations in the Arabian Gulf and other shipping lanes. Meanwhile, the coalition to support legitimacy in Yemen said today that it intercepted and downed a drone flown by the Iran-backed Houthi militia towards Saudi Arabia. Arab coalition spokesman Colonel Turkey Amaliki said the drone was launched towards the Saudi city of Najran. He stressed that all Houthi attempts to attack the kingdom are doomed to fail and vowed that the coalition will continue to deter the Houthi actions to neutralise and destroy their abilities in line with international humanitarian law. U.S. President Donald Trump said that he has fired National Security Advisor John Bolton after he disagreed strongly with many of Bolton's suggestions. Trump tweeted that he told Bolton that his services were no longer needed at the White House. Meanwhile, Bolton tweeted a contradictory message just minutes later, saying that he offered to resign, yet Trump delayed the discussion. Bolton, a Baltimore native, has in the past advocated for war with North Korea. The 70-year-old is also known for supporting the 2003 Iraq invasion following the first Gulf War in the 1990s. The United States announced sanctions on a wide range of terrorists and their supporters, including the Palestinian group Hamas and Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, on the eve of the 18th anniversary of the September 11 attacks. The U.S. Treasury Department said in a statement that targets include 15 leaders, individuals and entities affiliated with groups such as Hamas, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Iran's IRGC. The sanctions were applied using new tools from an executive order recently updated by President Donald Trump. The sanctions mean any property the targets may have in the United States would be blocked and the U.S. persons would generally be prohibited from having business dealings with them. Britain summoned the Iranian ambassador to condemn what it said was a clear breach of the assurances that was given over the oil cargo of the tanker Adrian Daria 1, which had previously been detained for breaching EU sanctions. Foreign Minister Dominic Rahab said Iran has shown complete disregard for its own assurances over Adrian Daria 1, accusing Tehran of reneging on a promise not to transfer oil from the tanker to Syria. Britain said it would raise the issue at the United Nations later this month. New satellite photos show the Iranian oil tanker pursued by the US remains off the coast of Syria. Sudan's Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok will head to South Sudan for peace talks between the ruling sovereign council and rebel leaders. In his first sovereign visit, Hamdok would join five members of the ruling sovereign council in the South Sudanese capital Juba on Thursday. Sudan's traditional government has made peacemaking with rebels fighting Khartoum one of its main priorities and is a key condition for the country's removal from the United States sponsors of terrorism list. Celebrating trade partnership between Bahrain and Thailand, a Thai expo was held at the Gulf Convention Centre, gathering over 120 representatives from 70 companies who came all the way from Thailand to showcase the products. More in this report with Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. A piece of Thailand in the heart of Bahrain. Thai Expo SME1 held at the Gulf Convention Center runs from today till tomorrow, the 12th of September 2019, hosting over 120 representatives from 70 companies with a large variety of Thai products and services from different fields such as fashion, food, health, spa, cosmetic and technology under one roof. Thailand and Bahrain, not the friendly but we consider as the family member, it's like the relative, it's like the brother, sister. Because when first I arrived in Bahrain one and a half years ago, 
the immigration, when they know I'm Thai, they don't know that I'm an ambassador. When they know I'm Thai, they, they're greeting me in Thai word. So it's been it's how wonderful that every people in the body, they can speak Thai. I think that uh, I, from many people that I meet, they say that when they know I'm Thai, they say, oh, I have been in Thailand last week, last year, or my family or my friends just visit. And I'm very happy. So I think that I can term the relationship is a very, very close and special relationship from all kinds of the level. The Expo is a platform of open-door trade between Bahrain and Thailand that strengthens business cooperation on so many levels. Not only that, it's one of the biggest roadshows of the Thai products to the GCC this year. Uh, we think Bahrain is kind of a center of Middle East. And um, with this co uh, collaboration between OSMEP and Tamkin, we will um, try to expand uh, to collaborate more and more for Thai SME and SME in Middle East and station center in Bahrain. So I think lifestyle and people here, we are quite similar. A lot, a lot of smiling face here, a lot of like hospitality, a lot of kind, nice people. So we believe that Thai product is suitable for Bahrain market. The expo aims to promote the trade value between the two countries, which on 2018 jumped to 43.2% to reach 415.46 million US dollars. Thai people is interesting to invest in Bahrain because in Bahrain is like mostly very friendly country and also is open for like foreigner to invest in that country so and also is flexibly uh, flexible for like foreign people to invest in the country a very very close friend and very need the you guys like uh, you know our product and in case instead of you know going to, all the way to Thailand you know to buy the things so we bring everything here, you know, just for the, your, your people to, to get it right away here. It's not just a normal expo, it's a unique entertaining Thai cultural experience with traditional shows, cultural performances, Thai food live cooking shows, fruit carving in a Thai beautiful art style and much more.